Okay, so let's now delve into the next stock. So Anglo-American Platinum's output would likely be flat in 2012 after it fell short of its target last year due to a spike in safety stoppages. The group said that it planned to refine and sell between 2.5 and 2.6 million ounces of platinum in 2012. And Plat's full year headline earnings per share fell almost 30% to 1,365 cents. The group had already flagged, to, flagged the market that it uh, expected earnings to fall by close to a third because of cost related uh, issues to and of course of course also related to black economic empowerment as well so that uh, some of the numbers out of uh, anglo platinum so simon when you look at this sector it's also been one of those sectors that have been really hard hit in 2011 from a share price perspective and also feeding through into the earnings as well platinum is the new gold sector uh, five years ago, the gold miners couldn't do anything right if they tried, um, and, and now with the gold price sitting at around 1700 they, they're all printing money. And I think maybe we're forgiving the gold miners some of their sins. Platinum is now the sector under the cosh. I mean, Angloplat was plus 1500 just, what, in 2008, paid 58 rand in dividend for a full year, and now it's paying 7 rand. They, they are struggling on all metrics. The, the, the big one is costs. They're up at 13,500 rand an ounce. They, they were looking to get it in at about 11, 11,500. That was their target from a couple of years ago. Completely missed that, yeah. never going to get back to that. They have, in the last decade, spent billions and billions on CapEx to ramp up their production and the like. We're not seeing that come through into the numbers. It, it was always a case of between Anglo Plat and Implats, you know, our preferred Implats. Now, I'm, frankly, I, if, if you want it, go buy the white metal. None of them are looking particularly yeah. exciting So for 81 me. stoppages over the period. We had 12 deaths over the period, Tsepo. Mm. Um, harsh times because inflation is also one of the things that the CEO, Neville Nicolau, has been talking of uh, to the extent that uh, if the platinum price doesn't reach above $1,900 an ounce going forward, mm. then he says that it's going to have a detrimental impact on CapEx spend going forward as well. For sure. I think uh, my take from these numbers was probably slightly different in that <laughs> you've mentioned all the difficulties. And uh, in a year where you have 81 stoppages um, and you have inflation as high as, as high as it's been, to have earnings relatively flat is actually pretty good going in my mind. Um, so uh, my take from the numbers was slightly positive. Um, if you're asking for whether... Were you accumulating today? Temple? Accumulating amplats? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, my, my explosion... <laughs> My exposure to this is via Anglos. I, I think uh, Ampats is currently, if you look at the market value of this, constitutes 20% of that Anglos market cap, even though revenue is about 8%. So I'd be rather going to the, to the parent company. Mm -hmm. Um, to get my experience. Let's touch on it from an operational perspective, uh, looking at some of the operations. We know uh, the Zimbabwe mine looking relatively attractive, and they also have an open pit mine here in South Africa. Is that where the focus really needs to be going forward, as opposed to the more dangerous mines that they have? For sure. I think uh, if you're looking at any miner, you want them to be mining as shallow as possible, just given the nature of the costs and the nature of the business. Um, safety, uh, safety is uh, a big concern, um, as well as costs, as I've touched on. So. The those should be the, the focus area. I think the market, if, if anything, is really undervaluing specifically that those Zim assets, um, given the difficulties that, that economies had in, from a political environment as well. So from an industrial uh, demand perspective, uh, given the fact that investment demand has been very strong for gold and platinum, platinum still trading at a discount to gold, I know that you're very averse to the yellow metal, but I know you like the platinum uh, you know, uh, metal slightly more because of the industrial part to it. Is China really going to push up this price going forward or is the slump in demand from the Eurozone going to be the big dampener? It, it's it's going to have to be driven by, by, by China. And I'm with, with SEPA. I, I think, let's say that best case scenario for Europe for the next decade or two is they go sideways. They're going to do it Japan and us, flipping in and out of, 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 of recession and the like. We, we've got to broadly look at, at Western Europe and say it's been great, but we'll get back to you in 2030 type of scenario. We've got to look to, to China. We've got to look to, to emerging markets around the world. Uh, Sima mentioned all the, the, the infrastructure, the growth that's happening in Africa. A lot of that's going to be roads going and that's going to put demand. But China's still going to be the huge demand. I suspect the new normal is, is gold price above platinum. I don't think that's going to change in a hurry. And I'm not convinced that we're going to see platinum going anywhere in a big rush. And the flip side is, let's say platinum kind of uh, goes along. Uh, the 1900 that you mentioned, uh, maybe, but the flip side is, where's the rand going to go? We're at about 770 today. I think the rand is back to seven long before it's back to nine. That's going to take off 10% of a platinum price. So we need platinum 2100, not 19. I don't see platinum 2100. Okay, so I know that Impala Platinum is the preferred play if you want to have exposure to a pure <coughs> platinum stock. 
hot or not for you, Simon? Uh, platinum stocks at the moment, I, none of them are attractive to me. I would rather buy an ETF or an ETN in the metal. And even that, as I said, with the round, I think going stronger. Um, so I, no Impala and no Anglo Platinum? No Anglo. I got no platinum <laughs> exposure d indirectly or directly. And of course, he has no gold exposure either, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, hot or not for you, Anglo Platinum? Uh, at these sort of valuations, not hot. Um, I, uh, thematically, I, I think I, I, I am bullish in terms of platinum. Uh, and when I say bullish, I'm not talking about the next six months or two a year. I, again, I'm talking long-term yes. perspective. And I think the driving force beyond that is bigger than just China. Mm -hmm. I think India um, and the other emerging markets are going to be uh, the bid of this, this platinum price. Actually, not just platinum, but industrial c commodities um, going forward. But you prefer the diversified exposure? Just from a valuations perspective right now, I'd rather have my platinum exposure via Anglos than just purely Anglo platinum. And, and I mean, p p part of the, 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 the issue with, 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 with platinum is it is, it, look at it for five or ten years, then it's a, a, a good story. The, the, the shorter term, I'd, it's not going to do anything particularly exciting. Okay, we've still got time even from a long-term perspective to head sure. into the platinum space. Okay.